May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So it's nearly Happy New Year's in the church. Because next week is the first Sunday in Advent, which means I've got to get organized. Um, but it also means that this Sunday is the last Sunday in our liturgical year. And we celebrate Christ the King. And I think it's really important that we do that at the end of the year. Because what we then do is we say, the things that have happened during this year, some, some of them have been fantastic, and, and some of them have not been fantastic. Some of them have been terrible, regardless. We affirm that Christ is King. Now that doesn't mean that the good things and the bad things don't matter. They do. But at the end of the day, what we're saying is that Christ is ruler over all these things. Now it's easy for us to, to then go, well, Christ is king, and to, to sort of fit into this model of kings. You know, if you've watched Game of Thrones or King Arthur or any of those sorts of things, you probably have a picture in your head of a king, and um, they've got a sword and a big throne uh, and a crown and nice fancy robes, and they rule over a piece of geography. Now, it might be England or Westeros or, or wherever. And it's easy for us to think perhaps that the kingdom of God is geographical like that. But it's not. The first thing to recognize is that in a kingdom, the most important will is the will of the king. So where that king's desires are significant and supreme, that is their kingdom. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom where we assert that Christ is king, is in all those places where the will of God reigns supreme. And so, as Christians, we shouldn't think of the kingdom of God as being made up, in any sense, geographically. But we should probably think more of diplomats. And um, uh, like, like when you go to seek asylum. Where's that? In the, when, you go to some, when you go and see the diplomats, you go to the, like, the embassy. embassy. That's it. Right. You'll get there eventually. That's the complicated word for today. Embassy. So, so the embassy is like... Um, a different country's sovereignty in the borders somewhere else. We as Christians should be diplomats and embassies for the kingdom of God. It should be within us to both be respectful for a country where we reside, just as diplomats and embassies are, but we recognize that our ultimate authority is not the geography that defines us, but our relationship to God. So what sort of king is Christ then? If, if, he, if he's not a king like, like uh, King Arthur or, or any of those others. Well, it's really interesting to me that on the day we remember Christ as king, the gospel passage we have, Luke 23, 33 to 43, is the story of Jesus being crucified. We talk about Christ being enthroned on the cross which makes for a very different picture to the big gilded chairs that we normally envisage kings having. And his crown is not some fancy gold headpiece. It's the thorns that were placed on him. And his fancy robes are the blood from his own back that he was whipped. So our king isn't like most other kings which means that the kingdom we represent should not be in any way like other kingdoms. Other kingdoms historically are founded to look after those that are inside them. First the king, 
and the king's family, then the king's knights. But at the end of the day, the primary responsibility of that sort of kingdom is the people within the kingdom. That's the traditional picture. That's how countries run. That's how uh, politicians get elected. That's how uh, all sorts of things happen. We look after our own. The kingdom of God is different. It's a kingdom that is founded and built to be outward looking, to care for those that maybe they are a part of the kingdom, but also for those who are not. So our king takes a cross and becomes a crown, a throne, thorns, becomes a crown, a beaten and bloody back, and he becomes a cloak. Our king, the king that we serve, for whom we are diplomats and embassies, is about transforming these most terrible things, not erasing them, not eradicating them, not it never happened, but transforming them and making, by God's grace, into something great. So when we put this at the end of the year and we look back over the year, and yes, there will be things that are less than positive. What we are doing, though, is we are recognizing that even in those terrible moments, by the grace of God, there might be something good to find. doesn't mean there were good events. Sometimes a bad event is just a bad event. But a bad event with God might be transformed into being able to be good somewhere. Because that's the power of our King, that even in the worst of circumstances, by the grace and transforming power of God, there might be new life and new hope. So we finish the year with death. We look forward to Advent, where we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King. We need to remember at this transitional moment that we are ambassadors of the King of life and hope. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.